Uh, welcome uh, to this session. Uh, in this session, I and my colleague Pan uh, will uh, talk about our uh, recent advancements in terms of security and privacy in Flower. Uh, the first part uh, will be about differential privacy. Uh, I'll provide some motivation uh, and then I'll go over the uh, definition of differential privacy. Then I'll explain about differential privacy in federated learning, and finally I'll show how you can use differential privacy in Flower. Uh, so the question is that, uh, is uh, privacy uh, really necessary in federated learning or not? Because in federated learning, uh, there is no direct access uh, to the data, and the data is also not uh, being exchanged between uh, the clients and the server. So it looks like everything should be fine, but that's not true. And uh, the model updates that are being exchanged between the clients and the server can be the root cause of uh, different privacy attacks. So the adversary can uh, observe uh, the model updates from the clients, uh, or it can only monitor the output model to perform different kinds of uh, privacy attacks, like membership, attribute inference uh, reconstruction or uh, model uh, extraction attacks. And uh, differential privacy is uh, a prominent solution uh, to provide privacy. And to put it simply, uh, the, like uh, one mechanism is differentially private. When uh, you apply this mechanism on one data set and you get uh, the output, and then you add or remove uh, a data sample from that data set and you apply the same mechanism and you get another output, it guarantees that those outputs uh, should be very similar. And uh, same goes uh, to the uh, differential privacy machine learning. So if you train a model on data set and you get model M1, and then you add or remove one data point from that data set and you train uh, the model to get uh, model M2, these uh, two models uh, should be uh, indistinguishable to uh, any adversary. And there are two main concepts uh, in differential privacy. Uh, one is clipping and the other one is noising. So the clipping basically bounds the sensitivity and the sensitivity is the maximum amount that the output uh, can change when we add or remove uh, uh, a data point. Uh, it also mitigates the impact of outliers. And there are uh, two uh, variants of clipping that we focus on, fixed uh, and adaptive clipping. And for the noising part, uh, it just adds some uh, calibrated noise to uh, make the output uh, indistinguishable. And uh, for differential privacy in uh, federated learning, we focus on um, two variants of central and local. And for central differential privacy, we assume that the server is responsible to perform the DP mechanism. And it does that by clipping the updates uh, from the clients and then adding some amount of noise to the aggregated model. And for local differential privacy, each client is responsible to perform a DP mechanism. And uh, the reason that we might use uh, local differential privacy is that it doesn't uh, trust a uh, server. So uh, for central differential privacy uh, in Flower, uh, the noising part is always happening at the server side. And we, it also supports both uh, fixed and adaptive clipping. And uh, we also made it possible to perform the clipping either at the client or at the server side. So for instance, if you want to perform the uh, clipping at the server side, you just need to uh, um, use one of these wrapper classes around your strategy and then pass the hyperparameters uh, for the DP part. And uh, if you want to use uh, differential, central differential privacy with uh, the client side uh, uh, clipping, uh, again, you need the wrapper, uh, uh, wrapper classes uh, for the noising part, but you also need to use uh, the mods, which was introduced yesterday, one of those clipping mods to perform the clipping at the uh, client side. Uh, and for local DP, uh, you need to use, uh, obviously, uh, the, uh, like the local mods because uh, 
the clipping and the noising parts are going to be uh, uh, applied on the client's uh, updates before sending them to the uh, server. Uh, just to show how easy it, uh, uh, easy it is to use uh, differential privacy in Flower. So before we had these uh, strategies that uh, you could create and uh, use it for training. But now uh, what you need to do is that you uh, just uh, have a, uh, uh, use a wrapper around your uh, strategy and then pass these uh, DP uh, hyperparameters. And this is for uh, server-side uh, clipping. So if you want to use the client-side clipping, in addition to those wrappers, uh, you just need to pass the, uh, the clipping mod uh, to the mod uh, attribute uh, in client app. Uh, I highly suggest you to check uh, the documentations in the Flower website. And now that we know uh, uh, how uh, Flower is addressing privacy. Let's see how it uh, addresses uh, security. Oh, hi. Um, well, differential privacy is really a nice and decent technique to pro protect privacy. But however, as we all know, in reality, well, if you add some noises to the model parameters, it will inevitably impact the final performance. So if you're aiming for higher accuracy and you don't mind some slight overheads, then Seek Aggregation is for you. And now we are very happy to announce that Seek Aggregation is now officially supported in Flower. And I believe Mohammed has done a great job explaining why we need to protect the model parameters. And in this case, uh, secure aggregation is to hide individual model updates from the server so that a curious server cannot infer anything from the individual client updates. Because while it is uh, relatively hard to dig anything useful from an aggregate model because it contains lots of training data, but it's, it is quite easy to dig something, well, basically to reconstruct the user level or say the sample level training data if the individual model updates is exposed to the curious server. So, in, in secure aggregation, well, this is actually a brief but not very accurate overview of the secure aggregation. And here we have three famous clients, Alice, Bob, and Carol. And here, uh, just for illustration purposes, we use pods of a digit one to represent model parameters, but please keep in mind that they are just illustrations. So, they well, the client model updates will not diverge as much in reality, and by no means they will really look like a digital one. And well, what the calculation do is to allow each client to mask its local model updates with uniformly random noises. So the job of these noises is to make the mass model parameters completely indistinguishable from a random noise sequence, so that any third party cannot dig anything useful from this random thing. But also, the, the protocol allows that on the server side, the server can still able to, and only able to unmask the aggregate model parameters, so it can still get a very accurate and a very accurate complete digit one on the server side, but it cannot access individual client model updates. Uh, I just want to reiterate that these are visualizations of model parameters, and they don't really look like this in reality. Yeah. And our circuit aggregation implementation in Flower features three things, which is modularity, flexibility, and extensibility. And the first thing I would like to stress is the modularity. Unlike, in many, unlike many other implementations, our, we go for a modular approach which means it's very easy if you want to use the secure aggregation protocols with other stuff in Flower. For example, you can use it with local DP mode, the fixed clipping mode. And also, our design is compatible with all existing strategies, which means you can, well, we can run the secure aggregation protocol with the federated averaging, and you can also work with central DP. But due to the very nature of secure aggregation, 
you cannot, the, the strategists will not be able to have the full control of the aggregation process. So that some, some strategies might be compromised because of this. And the last thing is extensibility. In this design, you can actually implement your own secure aggregation protocols if you like. This facilitates some academic research needs. And also, in the future, if we release more secure aggregation protocols, you can easily switch to different protocols, just change a few lines of code within a minute, and within a few seconds if you type fast. So, if you want to try out the SACAP Plus protocol in Flower, here's a code snippet, well, which is well, basically the code from Daniel's demo code. And we need to use the SACAP Plus workflow on the server app side, and also use the SACAP Plus mod in the, in the client app. And, well, you can see some protocol configurations here, and we included a complete and detailed doc string for the SACAP Plus workflow. So don't panic if you don't know how to configure the protocol. And you also, for more details, you are also very welcome to try out our security examples. And it is a simple example with five clients, and one of them is configured to drop out during the training to show that the security protocol is robust to dropouts. And we also include a more detailed explanation of security in this example. Sorry. Uh, we will continue working on this, and in the future, you can expect to see more variants of differential privacy. And the fast SAG app protocol, the light SAG app protocol, and we also plan to separate out the built-in quantization mechanism in the secure aggregation protocol, and so that you can free to choose whatever, whatever quantization algorithms you like. And well, that's pretty much everything we'd like to share with you about different privacy and secure aggregation. Well, any questions? Great stuff, thank you very much. Um, so you spoke about the extensibility and the ability to stack with, uh, with other modules and that kind of stuff. Um, it seems to me that you're not going to be able to either at compile time and maybe not even at runtime catch or flag incompatibilities in terms of strategies. So perhaps there's a room there for some sort of, I don't know, a flower lint tool or something that you could actually run to say, hey, you probably shouldn't combine these things because it's not going to be a good result. Oh, th thanks so much for the great question. Yeah, you are completely right. We are we, it is true that some strategies, especially those strategies, they, they want to access individual client model updates. They won't be compatible with the secure aggregation protocols. So we should actually flag something to know that, uh, hey, they can't do this. But also, eventually, we do recommend to read carefully about the doc string of the Sikagua workflow because it also explains how the Sikagua works under the hood and also how you can expect from this protocol. So th then you can know whether your strategy is compatible with the Sikagua protocol itself. Thanks. Okay, I th uh, great answer. Uh, I think we are gonna take one question from, the, from Michael, which is, he's joining us online, he's asking, what guarantee does central DP exactly provide in the context of FL? Uh, so, uh, just to show and of it, uh, okay. So, in central DP, it provides a guarantee that if we train uh, the, the model uh, with a bunch of clients, and then afterwards, uh, and when uh, we output the model, and then we afterwards we train the model with or uh, like by adding or removing a client, and we output the model again. Those two uh, models are not going to leak any information about that specific client. So that's the guarantee that we get in Central Artificial Price. Okay, cool. Wait, thank you very much for the introduction about the security aggregation and DP mods in Flower.